Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Hardwood Rod Podcast, where we talk about your craft and the culture. And today I have a good friend of mine stopping by. We go 10 years back, back to our college days. Louis Carion joins me today, also known as Lou Rock. And he's an artist, journalist, content creator, you name it. And we're going to be talking about life after college, right? The behind the scenes, the stuff you don't see when you graduate and you ask yourself the question, what's what's next? So we're going to talk about a little bit about that and his time at Ski TV, the regret, disappointment, writing his lyrics. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Niners, that and much more stay locked in all right guys we are back with another episode here on the podcast i got louis here on the podcast we go way back to our college days louis also known as lou rock welcome to the podcast man hey what's up rodrigo my brother how you doing i'm doing good man how are you dude how's everything doing good excellent man i hope uh, all is going well for you and the family no everything's going good man you know just uh Working from home, man, and and doing what I do. So, it's 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 been a minute, man, since we kind of uh, collaborated or even chopped it up, man. And for yeah. the for the audience, a little bit, uh, we went to uh, you know Cal State Dominguez Hills, and it's been a minute, man. And for a lot of the people that don't know, way back before podcasts were even called podcasts, I had you on for for. You could call it a podcast, but it was a pretty much an audio interview. That's right. And you were pretty much you could say you were probably one of my first guests, man. And yeah, yeah. It was when I when I dropped that short film. You know, we had we had you on, and that was back in you know 2012, 2011, man. So you know, ten years later, mm-hmm. you know, here we are back. You know, and tell us a little bit about you know. How your journey has been since then, man? Let's 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 see what 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 Louis has been up to lately. Um, you know, I've just been staying busy, man. Um, like you said, we definitely go back college days, Cal State Dominguez. Um, one of the the project that you referenced that was one of the earlier podcasts before I guess podcast really was popular like that. Yeah. Um, that was uh that was cool, and then like, like you said, we got to premiere the uh, song that I had put together. Uh, for your film that you had put together at the time. And uh, that was something new for me. I enjoyed doing that, um, you know, just being creative in the studio. And during that time, I was really into music, um, really focused on it as well, you know, going to college, working my full-time job, um, you know, electronic store, things like that. So um, those are good times. Definitely, you know, we were on it pretty early and that was a good experience over at Dominguez. Uh, Nothing but good things to say, but since then, definitely have um, ventured off into, you know, the work world, I guess you could say, and um, staying busy out here. Um, now, doing, I'm working in a field, I would say, that is not even related to what I went to school for, but it does help me as far as the skills that I was able to obtain in college. Um, they did help me uh, for what I do day to day, but Um, it's definitely not the specific area uh, of study that I went to school for. But even so, I I enjoy what I do. I work with the public, um, a lot of customer service uh, interactions. Um, I'm constantly in the field. So that's one thing that I really enjoy about it. I'm not um, in an office or anything like that, which I don't mind to do from time to time. But after a while, that's just kind of not my thing. But definitely enjoy being on the field and interacting with the community. Um, I'm also doing my music still as well. Took a long hiatus, to be honest, uh, on that for a while. You know, life gets in the way and things happen and you get detoured in other directions. And, um, you know, we're out here on the grind, all of us, you know, trying to make things happen. And during that time after college, I was involved in a lot of different internships uh, like Ski TV. I was involved with um, White Label Radio uh, that had a short stint on K-Day with uh, Host Mellow One. So those were good experiences to be able to to get uh, experience in regards to filming artists, going to different locations, doing backstage interviews, and just learning how to work on the fly. And it was a real opener to me to see 
um, how competitive the actual space is. Uh, I was exposed to a lot of different talents from people that were coming from everywhere uh, to this, you know, area in LA with, with ski under that whole ski lodge that they had out there. And Mm -hmm. at the time, a lot of videographers, people that did graphic designs, people that were just trying to get their foot in the music industry, radio industry, that type of stuff. And, you know, you really got to see how competitive it is and how hard these people work day in and day out. And there's a certain schedule that you need to have to be able to work those sort of jobs and be available and on the go. And yeah. it's not something that's set. And that's kind of the world that I've have become familiar with, with the jobs and things that I've had growing up, you know, um, to, you know, your, your check every two weeks and, you know, structure um, your hours more or less kind of stay the same throughout the week, those sorts of things. Well, in that type of world, I was exposed to a whole different, you know, atmosphere. And these guys are working from, sun sunrise to sunset sometimes and you got a lot of things going on it was really cool to watch writing camps go on simultaneously you got people upstairs in the lodge you know shooting um an interview with an artist and on this side in the radio room you got uh maybe an artist or somebody else inside you know that's being interviewed just a lot going on um so that was really cool to be exposed to that and be around ski be around some celebrities and things like that it was cool but you know um I found it to be very, um, very difficult to actually get your foot in the door with uh, an opportunity that will pay you and at least be some sort of um, steadiness in there, you know, but after a while, it was something that I had to kind of back away from and get back into the world that I know, like, again, with steady paychecks and some sort of structure and things like that. After a while, it gets a little discouraging, I'll be honest with you and the listeners and you know, um, but I took I took the experiences for what they were. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my time with everyone. I enjoyed uh, meeting all the different faces from everywhere that were coming around to try to get into this particular area, this space of work. Um, you know, and it was cool. Like uh, Ski, he had the the um, Ski live show over at Access TV. Yeah. Uh, for a while, that was really cool. We got access in there to see a lot of different artists come in, and that was cool to see the whole production. And is that still going show- on or no? No, they canceled that. Um, it's been a while since they canceled that, but I haven't really seen anything like that pop up since that since that existed. To be honest with you, with a host like that, and you know, uh, little small interviews in between the show, and you got people that come out and live performances. It really was live. It was it was pretty cool to see all that go down, and you know, the whole stuff behind the scenes, getting the people inside the building, you know. Uh, setting them, getting the position. I, I got to hang out a couple times and uh, backstage and see the artists come in. I even did miscellaneous stuff like running around and getting, you know, uh, lunch for let's say like riffraff that would come in for an interview or something like that. Yeah. And I would get put on stuff like that, kind of go for work, you know, when there wasn't anything to shoot, because again, you got a couple people with you that all have, you know, cameras and they're ready to go and they want to shoot. And there's only so many angles of the same thing that we can all do. Yeah. You know, so you, you, you play your part one day over here, another day you play your part over here. So it was exciting. It was a good time. Um, but during all that, it kind of took me away from my specific interests as far as my own music and the things that I was creating. So again, kind of went on a hiatus for a while, but I want to say as of June, 2021, I started getting really back into it, uh, really some different music, different tunes towards the end of the year. So I'm hoping I can continue that momentum going into 2022. And, you know, it's all for the love. It's always been all for the love. You know, obviously if opportunity, things like that were to pop off, that'd be great. But, uh, you know, I keep it realistic on this side and work and handle that type of thing and enjoy my interests when I can. Nah, yeah, man. It's so like going back kind of to that, it's, it's, it's kind of eye opening, right? Especially, you know, Right out of school, I feel a lot of people mm-hmm. have that kind of uh, that challenge, right? Where mm-hmm. you know it's it's like, man, I, I gotta I gotta make some money here, man. I gotta get some you know some sort of stability, right? Because at, at yeah. some at some point, like you could only do that for so long, and like you said, right? It's very competitive, man. It's it's yes. very especially in that industry, you know. Mm-hmm. And during that time, like you mentioned, like like those types of shows. I feel like it was like a golden era for those types of like the that time like the, the entertainment as far as like that 
you know, 106 in Park type of vibe, right? Where absolutely, you know, I think that's what kind of like started that type of vibe too. But you know, take us back. You know, at some point, what you know, and that's that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, at what point does passion take a back seat, right? At, at what point do you just say, oh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta let my passion kind of, you know, come, you know, I'll come back to it because that sucks, right? You know, like we, we, yeah. we, we go and we go through this process called the education system, and we have this dream, right? And we see it, like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, right? And yeah, we come out and it's like, damn, like it's not, <laughs> it's not like right there, it's not like boom, it's it's happening. Oh and yeah, so. Like at what point you're like, man, you know, I got I gotta take my passion and I'm gonna have to work on it later. Well, um, you know, when you got responsibilities and families and you know things that you're re- responsible for to take care of, after a while, you know, you only get that that grace period, like you said, for a while. You know, maybe you run it a year or two. I think I maybe ran it like two and a half things like that, and I was kind of outside of my box that I, I you know, reference. I was always used to that's you know, the values that were instilled in me and growing up from my mother and the people around me that raised me, you know, having yeah. a jo- steady job. And, you know, my mom's, um, works for the, uh, the, what is it? The department of social services for LA County. So she's always pushed for that structure and that type of work. Cause that's what she's used to and right. it's secure and that type of stuff. So, uh, I just remember for a long time, her kind of driving that into, into my head. So that was the first time in my life right after college, um, right after college that I just kind of, you know, threw my hands up. I, I had had a position in, the, in a job that I was working for a while and then um, ended up leaving from there. Uh, and from there I said, all right, well, going forward, I'm going to take a shot. I'm going to try to get my hands, you know, involved in various areas. You know, like I mentioned the ski, I was also helping my, uh, my buddy, Terry Kennedy, former professional skateboarder for Baker skateboards and oh, other, yeah. other various sponsors. So we also got together with, uh, and also my, my buddy, Felix, uh, Babauta, I think that's how you say his last name, Felix, uh, otherwise known as fuzzy fees, a producer also involved in the music industry and stuff like that. So, um, they had a clothing line called fly society along with, um, hip hit as well. He's uh, is involved in the, um, in the clothing line. And that was something, and that's more in the skate world, the more lifestyle world. So that was new territory for me. However, I wasn't a stranger to the skateboarding aspect of it because you're a skater, um, you're a skater yourself, or you were, cor- right? Correct, correct. So I was started skateboarding back in the late '90s. Uh, I want to say seventh grade of middle school. I picked that up. Uh, my buddy Darrell Stanton. I went to school with him, and he was always really good and known around the area. Uh, he's a professional skateboarder. And at that time, I remember I just being heavily influenced by him as well as other friends that I knew that skated at school. So yeah, I got into it pretty, pretty early during those days. Um, and from there, my interest just never left. I always had a passion and a love for it. Obviously that's something that's really difficult to get your foot in the door into that, but you know, and you got to have the skills clearly. Yeah. Hey, but it, it's, it's funny how you, you kind of recorded like, like your sessions, like, and yeah. on VHS, right? Yes, correct. At the time, we used to always roll around uh, with a Sony Hi8 camera, and <laughs> we just we just filmed a bunch of random stuff, our skating, and uh, you know all the hijink stuff, the things that we would come across, the falls, the makes, and you know. I wish at the time I would have got more tapes though, because what I used to do is record over a lot of what I had already done, and I could have had so many more tapes. But at the time, you know, I'm I'm young, I don't have a job or anything like that, and yeah. those tapes cost and. And I can only get so many out of my parents. So, but yeah, I'm glad that I have those. It's it's always like going in a time machine. And I recently just started digitizing those. So from time to time, I'll post those up like on social media and kind of share with people um, those times. You know, those are special times and, and, and good moments that I share with my friends. So, but kind of getting back to what we were saying though, that love for that passion, that skateboarding has never left. So when I had the opportunity to kind of get involved and use my skills that I had acquired in college. Uh, my experiences through ski and that whole music industry, I was able to kind of take all of that along with my own interest because in high school, I started getting really into recording music. So 
I was able to take everything that it was kind of my passions and my interests and just put it all into that. So after college, after I left that last job, I was able to take all that stuff that I had learned and just invest all that energy into Fly Society and, you know, Terry and Felix's and Hit's vision and what they wanted. And, you know, we got good opportunities with our skate team to shoot photos. We went to um, different locations like Active in Riverside and we held demos and that was really cool to kind of experience that and be around the skate world and the industry and be exposed and be with Terry when he's going to these, you know, more popular skate, uh, you know, contests where like Paul Rodriguez or someone else is there, you know, the, mm. the higher ups. So that was cool. Um, but with that, all, all that being said, um, eventually some business stuff ended up happening behind the scenes and everyone kind of dispersed and went on their own way, unfortunately. So, you know, again, like you say, disappointment, another area has nothing to do with the music industry. Um, separate situation we got going on over here. And in this area, there's also hurdles to get over. So it's just kind of hitting hurdle after hurdle after hurdle, lack of opportunity, frustration, you know, and after a while, all that stuff sits on you. You got family, you got people looking at you like, okay, it's been a year, it's been two, now you're doing this, now you're doing that. The money's not steady. A lot of it is, is uh, you know, kind of pay as you go per assignment type of thing. Yeah. Then, then you got other headaches and issues you got to run into, which I'm sure you've come across and you do things for certain people, freelance work. People don't come through with, with money and things like that. And yeah. that's a, that gets you discouraged too and wants you to get back to what works and what you know. You're going to get your check every two weeks. And yeah. eventually I kind of hit my wall um, and, and decided, hey, I needed to go back into the real work world. And from there I kind of got lost in the sauce for a couple of years and just kind of kept my head low and just did my thing and just got my money and, you know, held it down for the fam. And that's all I could really do, you know, until – one day that that passion just kind of ignited again and i i've always had my own setup for the last couple of years but wasn't really putting my equipment and things like that into work so I finally started getting back on it recording and then from there it just kind of started naturally clicking and coming back together and i'm happy with what i've been able to put together since i really started recording music and getting back into it again from about january 2021 till now and um these days i'm not really overthinking things i'm just having fun with it I'm not sitting here and thinking about this is going to go for this project or this mixtape or this or that. Right. I just naturally coming in, coming up with stuff, trying to be creative, putting it out, moving on to the next one, throwing it up online. That's it. You know, wherever it goes, where it goes. Yeah. I feel, you know, that's I, it. Yeah. I feel like when, when, when you're, you have that, that freedom and there's no really like deadlines and you got something to say, hey, you want to push it out. I feel like, you start you start building this like snowball effect where like you or like you start finding something out of that right there's like mm -hmm. there's there's no real like like target or yeah. kind of goal you're just doing it but yeah. but through all that you're going to find something you know and you probably it'll, it'll probably stick or probably not but mm -hmm. you know it's something that kind of like as, as creators that's kind of what we do right we we just see what sticks and we just keep on doing it again and see what happens Correct. Correct. Yeah. I'd have to agree with that. You know, I, I think I create the best when I don't have things on my mind to stress about as far as things that, you know, life finances, things like that. When I can just sit comfortably and kind of get lost in, in the creative process and not have something in the back of my mind, you know, yeah. it kind of is, is just kind of, um, you know, drilling away in the back of my head, you know, that, Hey, right now, this is just a temporary escape, but this is going to be waiting for you over here, you know? So I kind of find my creative processes, my juices start flowing, you know, when I, I don't have anything really kind of pending or anything that I know I got to take care of, or I got to get this money because I got to fix this, or I got to pay right. for that, or, you know, just life in general. So I, I find that. And then I'll be honest with you too. Um, after I finished college and after I left my, my job right before, or I think it was right after I graduated, um, you know, I was, I kind of, it was around the time after I, I dropped my last project, uh, I think it was around 2012, I want to say, end of 2011 going into 2012. Um, I just kind of hit a dead end as far as um, creatively what I wanted to say, what I wanted to put together, what I, you know, lyrics I wanted to share and just, 
I don't know. I don't know. There was just a, a, a wall there as far as with writing. And I had never experienced that before. And I've always told myself that whatever I do creatively, I don't want to force it. That's one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to force it. I don't want to come off cheesy or any sort of negative way. So um, I kind of let things be along with all the other things I had going on my going on in my life. I got lost in the sauce and time went by. So that's why I say how special that time was for me back in 2021 uh, around in June. The just, yeah, it just started flowing again. And just one day, just the creative juices started flowing and I started getting back in the, in, in the groove of things. And it had been a while since I had written anything and here I am and I got songs and hooks and verses and stuff. And that motivated me and pushed me and got me back in that space because I didn't want to lose it again. I had went literally like years where I didn't have the motivation to want to write anything, to want to do anything because I just got so lost in life yeah. where there was no interest in that. You feel, you feel like um, these past two years have really helped, especially with the, all this lockdown stuff. Uh, you think, yeah. it's, you think it's really kind of sparked a little bit uh, like uh, as far as writing or just ideas in general? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I guess it was a blessing in disguise in that sense. That's very true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Being here, uh, things being closed, having the equipment here, the microphones, you know, the, everything I need to get it done here. I have plenty of instrumentals, plenty of beats. I have instrumentals and beats from years ago that I've got that I've never used. I have folders full of beats. I have friends that make beats. I mean, that was never the case. It was, you know, yeah. I, I, I don't know where the interest kind of went away and disappeared for a little while and the passion and the motivation, but I'm just thankful that it returned. And I think the pandemic did have a lot to do with it, which is being in, in a, in a time where we're all under one roof where we can't really go out nowhere and kind of want to branch out and start getting back into things. And I think that really helped encourage me. Did, um, is, is there, is there a particular, I don't know, uh, track that you've worked on that, that maybe might be the beginning to something like maybe let's say like an album. Um, no, no album in particular. Uh, I've been happy with all the stuff that I've been that I've been putting out. I, you know, I feel like the music I'm making now, honestly, is the some of the best music that I've made ever. Um, and when I go back and listen to my previous stuff, I honestly don't like listening to a lot of it um, because I can hear, you know, the little things that I that I that I don't hear. I can hear all the things that I would have fixed, you know, now. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, and I can't go back and fix it. Yeah. You know, little little things like lining this up a little better, saying this enunciation and, you know, uh, better. So little things like that or, or you know, making the flow a, a little more um, uh, as far as like the delivery, you know, m making it all flow just better in, in regards to the way I was putting music together back then. Yeah. Uh, more structure wise. And then nowadays I'm kind of just like letting it flow. So I'll have uh, things outside of the box. And when I say that, I mean like. I'll have instead of just like a, a structured 16 verse, maybe I'll go a little longer. Maybe instead of a structured eight bar chorus, I'll cut it down to four or, you know, things like this. After the verse, maybe the, the chorus doesn't come back in. Maybe there's like a, a small little space to let it breathe for a bit and then the chorus and then the second verse or things like that. So I've been getting creative um, on all different ends of it, to be honest with you. I've been um, recording my stuff, editing it, which is all new territory for me. I've always paid to go to a studio. I've always enjoyed the studio atmosphere, being in, being in there and kind of just working on the rhymes, um, not having to do all that. Paying someone that knows all that stuff, can work at a quick pace, and just being in a different atmosphere outside of you know the norm for me. So that um, – it's all changed now because now I see that I actually do prefer being more hands-on and learning all this on my own because I can pump it out when I want to. I can sit here and play with different things. I'm not on the clock. I'm right. comfortable. I don't have things, you know, in the back of my mind. I'm just enjoying the creative process, which is I, I can say definitely now I, I'm enjoying that creative process. Nice. Now, if, if you had an option to kind of – Reverse time a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you have taken any any path differently now knowing what you know now? Um. Yeah, I would have. Uh, I would have tried to maybe commit a little harder to getting into a field of my study. 
um, because I feel like after college was over, you know, a lot of the opportunities that I didn't really consider when I first started going into this field, I didn't really consider the lack of opportunities, at least that I see on this side of kind of like where we stay at, like in the South Bay area, things like that. Yeah. Um, and in areas that would be my interest, a lot of it is out in Los Angeles. Well, I have a lot of experience with previous jobs that I work in Santa Monica and, you know, other areas like that where I'm getting these, getting on the freeway and taking these commutes. And as anyone that lives here knows, those commutes daily back and forth can really weigh on a person and yeah. it's a lot of wasted time. So for me growing up, that was a big deterrent for why I never really took the step in wanting to try to get work out in that direction to right. avoid the traffic. And then at the same time, I never took the leap to maybe get around the traffic by moving, just moving out there because I love Long Beach. This is where I'm from and this is where I'm comfortable and this is the area that I prefer to be in. Yeah. So I can remember like just commuting out to ski for different assignments and this like that. And because obviously I'm one of the interns and the work that I'm doing, a lot of the times I'm getting stuck driving around in LA and traffic and things that I don't like, Yeah. you know? Uh, trying to fight for parking and find this and find that, you know, I got equipment and things jammed into my car and this and that. So when I first started, I wasn't really seeing or understanding maybe what I was really signing up for and what it really meant to be an intern in this world, you know? Yeah. Um, and I adapted to it. I learned it for a while. And then eventually it just kind of got old to me because I started seeing that there's lack of opportunity here. It's very competitive. You know, I'm going to, get take an exit on this and get back to what I know and how I know to make money generate and live and keep my head above water because this over here is great and all and I love it but I see lack of opportunity um and I'm not willing personally to take the leap to move over here to cut out things like traffic and things like that so with all that being said I don't take any of that into consideration when I went into school you know, like you say, we follow our passions, our interests and things like that. And I love what I went to school for. I love the teachers that I had, the professors, the assignments that we did, the, you know, everything about it. I, I enjoy just the campus in general. Uh, right. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, of the Toros. My mom went there. My brother graduated oh, from nice. there. Uh, I graduated from there. So yeah, I, I have a lot of pride in the school and, I, and I've seen the way it has advanced and really improved over the years. And I know a lot of people now like at work that study and go to Dominguez and I, I can see the way it's been elevating. No, oh, yeah. Anyways, but yeah, that's kind of why I stand with things. No, yeah, I think that's, that's, we could always do a little something, right? L looking back, you know, but, you know, I feel like, you know, for us, you know, a lot of people, it's tough and you, and, and you, and you brought an interesting point, traffic and traveling, yeah. you know, to these places. A lot, yeah. Like a lot of these things are, are based off, of that area right and i remember back then where I, when i had my internship and i had to travel to brentwood like two or three times a week oh and, man yeah and uh it, it was like it, t it takes a toll on you oh but, absolutely you know at the end of the day everybody has different situations right and some would mm -hmm. say oh well if you really want it you would go get it or if you know right correct yeah. And and it, it depends, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has different situations. So it's not like you could have just like literally forced yourself to like go out there. But at the same time, you got bills to pay or you got rent to pay or you got to be there with your kids or w whatever it exactly. is. Right? So exactly. it, it, it all depends on everybody's situation. But, you know, talking about this thing called passion you know, the good thing is that we still have time, right? There's still time and, mm -hmm. you know, our creativeness never kind of leaves us, or, or at least I hope so. You know, something either sparks you to kind of get back on it. And, you know, talking about the dream job, what 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 job would be kind of your ideal job where if nothing kind of, all things considered, would be, you know, in the way, what would be something that like, okay, that this is what I want to do and, I want to continue doing. So what, what, what job would that be? I mean, just offhand thinking now, you know, the way things are now and what's out here, you know, there's a lot of opportunity, I, I would think, uh, possibly with maybe like Apple Music, you got streaming services like Spotify now and Tidal, you know, I don't know, but they probably have offices out here now and, 
you know, being involved in, in that sort of music scene, uh, it may be even a good job over at a record label, who knows, but these days I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how relevant that would be to be with a, a label. It was times were different back then. Right. Uh, these days, a lot of people are doing things independently. Like you said, we have our own setups and things that we're doing and we make it happen. We push content out um, as creators. So I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, but definitely I would I would love to be involved in something, you know, as far as music related. That's, that's always been my passion, you know, or even like uh, like my time with, like within the skate industry. You know, if things would have worked out like that, I definitely would have uh, love to be involved with a clothing company that has a skate team and we're going out and we're shooting stuff in the field and clips and pushing content out on Instagram or YouTube or whatever the case may be. And, yeah. uh, you know, shooting promo stuff for upcoming, upcoming seasons with new gear and, you know, all that stuff is cool. I had a little bit of uh, a taste of, of, of everything of all my interests that I've ever had growing up. So I, you know, I got some money here and there and got to meet cool people along the way, but you know, it's kind of hard to say where I would where I would particularly want to go now out there. I don't know exactly like, you know, what's out here because I remember uh, from high school going into college, starting college, I really was into Double XL magazine. I still have a, I still have tons of my old Double XL magazines. I I keep a lot of that stuff. Right. And I remember people like Rob Markman and. Um, YN that they were people that I would read the articles and stuff that they were putting together. And I tell myself, you know what, this is what I would want to do. I'd want to do this. Come to find out, um, you know, I, Craig, I don't know if I'm right on this, but from what I found out later on was like those types of jobs, they're not really even making that much. But as a kid, you know, you're growing up and you're seeing this, it's just, everything's about this and you love this and you're reading this and you know that there's a job here, but you don't see the back end of it, that this person's probably not even making enough doing this to, you know, keep their head afloat or they're probably doing this along with something else. So, and then nowadays things have just changed. Those magazines and stuff aren't even around no more. Everything's transitioned and gone online. Right. So that was another thing uh, that I didn't foresee happening at the time. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of different opportunities out there that out there these days. That's why I kind of point out the streaming services. I know that's the big thing now in the music industry. Yeah. It's uh, changed. Play- it's mm-hmm. changed playlists curating things like that for sure it's definitely changed yeah and you know speaking of music man you 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 really find yourself in the music scene man like (laughs) you're you're if if there's a big event you're there man (laughs) oh yeah i I love music i love going to shows i love concerts um you know all that stuff ever since i was i was young i've i've i was on it i remember being at kanye west first la show I remember just being at different festivals and stuff that ended up being, I was there for the easy E hologram, um, you know, all these different moments and stuff. And that's another thing I, I, I go because I love them. I love the live shows. I love hip hop, which is my preferred genre. I love all types of genres of music, but hip hop rap, that's my preferred genre. That's what I grew up on. That's what I was exposed to early as a kid. Um, you know, my mom and my dad exposed me to a lot of different stuff, probably things I shouldn't have been listening to honestly at that age, but thankfully they were, kind enough to bless me with that sort of stuff and learned a lot of different, um, you know, groups and artists and things like that. And I had older cousins that I looked up to that exposed me to a lot of different stuff, different types of artists that my parents weren't exposing me to. Um, there was more West coast stuff. My cousins will expose me to more East coast down South type of artists and things like that. And I just remember as a kid soaking all that up, my cousins were really into hip hop, like pure hip hop, you know, like break dancing and graffiti and, turntables and all that stuff and you know uh the elements as they, as they would say and uh i remember just being wanting to be a part of it wanting to be a part of it helping my cousins get cardboard together and we'd be out and we'd uh-huh. be break dancing i remember we would we were break dancing having a battle one time inside the uh, lakewood mall and got kicked out by security that was pretty cool <laughs> um that was pretty cool against some random people that we ran into but you know that was um those were good times, and that's kind of where my love and passion for hip hop started off was with that break beats and things like that, and then from there it transitioned over into you know music and songwriting and artists and albums and things like that. Um, when I started getting exposed to the stuff that my parents were giving me, 
Um, so yeah, that, that's it's it's definitely always been an interest of mine. So if there's something good that I like, an artist, I don't mind supporting. I'm there for the experience. I'm there to hear the tunes that I love and I play, whether it's at home in the car. I'm I'm there to hear it. And also too, another thing what I was doing for a while was I have my YouTube channel, Collective State TV. That's right. A lot of the stuff I was documenting, documenting and putting it online. And mind you, this is all just for the love. Again. A lot of it is just for the love. I can't monetize any of that stuff. I don't own the rights to that audio. A lot of the stuff that I've had up there has gotten taken down as well. I have plenty of video uh, yeah. footage of so many artists from so many places, you know, and a lot of it I can't monetize, but I still put it up. And, and I get messages and comments from people from all over the world that check out that content and appreciate it. And for whatever reason, we'll never see this sort of artist, you know, in their area for whatever circumstance may be. And they appreciate it that they get to see this artist and see them perform their song or whatever the case may be. But, you know, and helps and at the same time helps build my name and my channel and the things that I have on there because I'm cross promoting with other things that I got going on. So right. I just try I try to make it work and push out the content that I can in, in my favor, you know, whenever I can. What concert or event you, you would say is probably like your top, like the most uh, top, like right up there that you that you've attended? Mm, so many man honestly and that's no exaggeration i've yeah. been so many shows i'm curious man um i'd say again the the easy hologram i believe that was a rock the bells um I rock the bells one year the easy hologram that was pretty cool i actually remember getting kind of emotional watching it because i was such an easy e fan growing up I remember begging my mom to take me to Big Five to go buy a White Sox hat because Easy E wore it, and I saw Easy E had it on, so I wanted a White Sox hat. Uh-huh. You know, so I just remember. Um, I remember when I heard him being announced when he died on the radio. I was listening to the radio back then. A lot of those times back then, we were listening to the radio all the time because we wanted to catch the music, and we were recording them on tapes. So you'd have these mixtapes of just various songs and stuff you'd catch on the radio. And I remember at the time it was at night, and I was listening and. Fortunately, he had passed away, and I remember that stuck with me. And so fast forward years later, when I see the hologram, that's the closest thing that I have ever gotten to seeing what it would be like to see Easy e Live. Right. And I remember seeing that and getting a little emotional. And, and if you'll notice, uh, that's probably like one of my biggest videos that I've ever recorded as far as like number-wise. It's blown up. I remember TMZ picked it up and uh, various blogs during the blog era picked that up. And it was pretty successful in gaining traffic to the channel, um, you know, and cross-promoting again because my music is the intro to all the videos that are posted up. And that was good exposure as well. But I remember just watching that. And, uh, it, and if you watch it today, it's a little shaky. Because at the time I was I was trying to I was trying to stay steady on it, right? Right. But at the same time, I didn't want to view that through the viewfinder and experience it just like that. <laughs> so I was just like, no, I have to see this with my own eyes. So a lot of it, I'm because uh, I know that's a common thing. I, I get comments like that, like sometimes, like why is it so shaky and things like that. So um, it's that's because I really wanted to watch it with my own eyes. I didn't want to just focus through the viewfinder like that. Um, I try to hold it steady as best as I could and kind of capture that. But I was like, this is that moment. They've never done anything like that again. I don't think there's been a hologram since that. And that came after the Tupac one. So, yeah, that, that, that was one of the more memorable ones that I can remember. I remember seeing a good show with Freddie Gibbs. Um, and, and that was a smaller intimate show over at the Santa Ana, the observatory. And I just enjoyed his presence. I just enjoyed his crowd control. Um, his delivery, just how wild the show, you know, got with him on stage, drinking, smoking, talking shit and just, you know, being yeah. all over, being all over the place with it. And the music was good. The, the mosh pitting was going on. It was packed. Like I, there's little things like that, that I remember, but I've seen so many different people. Like I mentioned earlier, I remember the first time I seen Kanye West in LA for his first show right after, I think it was right after graduation or I'm sorry, not graduation, um, college dropout. I just dropped. Man. And he was starting to take off through the wire was blowing up uh, on 106 in park. And oh, that's, just, that was, I think that was his first track. No. Yeah. That was the first one. That was the first one. And I remember, um, you know, saying and, and telling my parents, like, I need a ride. Like I need to get out here for this. And I remember my mom dropped me off, picked uh-huh. me up, you know, Dame Dash was there. Biggs Burke was there. All the old Rockefeller dudes. And it was just an experience, you know, and I, and I remember that. 
Uh, more recently, I went to the Kanye West and Drake concert for the Free Larry Hoover event. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was I was there to experience that. Obviously, these two guys, from what we understand, were beefing at one point or not getting along. And here they are coming together for this super show. So I had to be there for that. I had to see that live. And that was crazy to see because that was being promoted on Amazon and, you know, yeah. live stream. So they had a big production going on for that. And yeah, just too many to too many to recall, but been there for plenty of good festivals, plenty of good small intimate shows from San Diego to San Bernardino to up north, you know, South Bay area, um, you know, all, all kind of stuff, dude. What would you say, like the craziest event that's happened as far as like, like something happens, like uh, I forgot, oh. like there was this one incident at one of those events. Uh, oh, I think you didn't you go to those? Uh, somebody got shot. No. Uh, yeah, um, that was one of the more recent ones that I've been to. I went to the. Um, no, no, it was uh, they got they got stabbed. Right? I think. That's yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the uh, I believe his name is Drake Draco Draco the Ruler. Yeah. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, I'm a, I've always I'm aware of him, but I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not familiar with his music, but apparently, I guess there was several stages at the at the festival. This was at the uh, Once Upon a Time in LA. I think there it's you go. Festival. There, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so we went there, and um, yeah, we were uh, right after Brenton Woods had performed. We were waiting, I think it was for YG next to come out, and we just noticed that they had put up his stuff. It looked like he was going to have strippers on stage. They were setting up poles and this and that, <laughs> and next thing we know, um, you know, because where they had us at position in the parking lot was adjacent to the uh, fence line. On the other side of the fence was like the main street, so we could hear an ambulance pull up. We could see the lights behind the fence, but they had privacy tarps over the fence. So you couldn't see in all you see is the red lights illuminating. Right. Yeah. So we're there waiting. And next thing you know, that kind of clears out that goes and we're waiting. No one's telling us anything. And then you see staff come out, you know, the hands and they start taking everything down again. And you're like, okay, well maybe some have YG. Then nothing <laughs> happens. And they just start playing random music. And then you start hearing whispers around that. Hey, uh, something happened. The show's like actually over Mind you, we hadn't seen none of the headliners yet. None of the headliners performed at this festival. And come to find out, we we saw on Twitter that Draco had been stabbed in the neck, um, you know, and he had passed away. At this point, that was the, the rumor that was going around. So I ended up getting out of there uh, as fast as I could before word kind of really spread because we were like in a sea of people out there and right. i wanted to get out of there as quick as i could everybody was still standing by hoping that the show was going to come back but that's probably the 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 craziest situation that i've seen um i didn't see the actual assault or you know the, where he right, got stabbed yeah. but it was literally on the other side of the stage um that we were facing in the backstage <laughs> area from what i understand a Man. group got through a side gate which allowed them access into the backstage a big brawl ensued and he got stabbed in the neck from what i understand and uh, passed away i don't know in, in route to the hospital or at yeah. the hospital but yeah that was crazy yeah that's crazy man it just it just you know there's always something happening man at, at some event man if it, you might not he see it but you might probably hear about it man so <laughs> that's crazy oh, yeah. dude oh yeah oh yeah and other things too you know you get you go to shows and people are just moshing and getting crazy and you know i remember uh an occasion where i went to go see um asap mob and danny brown and this was at the hollywood palladium and they uh, Danny Brown was the opening act and the crowd in there got so turned up when Danny Brown came out. And this is the first time I've ever seen Danny Brown live. I was familiar with his music. I knew he, you know, he gets crazy, but I didn't realize the crowd reacted to his music like that. Yeah. And I just remember getting caught up in the, 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 just the swaying of the weight of people. Like it got to a point to where you lost control, uh, to being able to move. It was just you're swaying with the momentum of the crowd, and it got really scary there because uh, I felt like if I would lost my footing at any point, which I thought was going to happen several times, and I fell, definitely getting trampled, definitely getting stomped on, and it's not even so much on purpose. It's just yeah. that motion, that swaying of everyone's body weight going from one side to the next, um, and thankfully I was by some people that we were able to kind of, they, they were under the same, you know, thought process like us that we need to get out of here like ASAP because this could go south fast. So we kind of helped each other 
gain our traction back and we were able to slip out of the crowd. But I can recall that very vividly because I've never experienced anything like that in all the shows that I've ever been to. And it kind of reminds me of that whole Travis Scott situation where yeah. people unfortunately passed away getting trampled and all that. And you kind of think like, well, how could that happen? It can happen very easy. Yeah. And there's so many people in one congested area like that. Yeah. After a while, you lose your traction and, and you can't get out. You're trapped. That's crazy, man. That's that's just, that's one of those things I was gonna mention, like the Travis Scott one. I was like, man, it's like imagine just just being not able to breathe, and you're like in the middle yeah. of all this, and nobody knows what's happening, and mm-hmm. there's no way mm-hmm. out. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Music's blasting. Yeah. You yeah. hope somebody hears you scream. You know. Yeah. Sp- speaking of freaking screaming, yo, man, what's up? I know you were at the Niners game the, uh, the other Sunday, man. <laughs> yes, uh, I saw the Niners versus the Rams. It was exciting. That was the first time I had ever been to SoFi Stadium. I was kind of worried, too, that I was like, man, if something goes <laughs> down, I might get into it, man, with the Rams. Fans. Right? I already, I already right. knew. I, I had to bring I the wifey, man. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. No, no, I hear you. You know what? I'm not even going to lie to you, dude. I was so surprised at how packed that place was with Niner fans. It was a sea of red in there. I think way more Niner fans were in there than the Rams fans, to be perfectly honest with you. When I look back at video and things like that, it was a sea of red in there. Yeah. Not that Rams fans weren't deep in there as well, but I don't think they were ready for the numbers of the Niner fans that were in there. And that place erupted. When we came back and tied it, when we took it for the W... That place erupted. It was so exciting. And everyone in my section damn near was a Niner fan. Everyone was going crazy. We had a couple Rams fans in our section. They weren't really trying to throw hands or anything like that. But definitely any time they were getting over on the Niners made it clear, uh, you know, that they were cheering for the Rams, obviously, and and being a little obnoxious about it, like trying to settle the crowd down, our section down. So when we we were able to get that W, everyone erupted and kind of just went in on them. And those poor guys, they got they had to get tongue lashings from everywhere. It was crazy. No, yeah. So where I was, I had some Rams fans, but I had some uh, Niner fans mostly around me. But mm. yeah, towards that, it was like a minute left. Um, the guy, the the the, the fans <laughs> in front of me, they they left, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. at that point. It was just me and my wife just, you know, kind of almost surrounded by Rams fans, but there's still Niners fans around us a little bit. Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, it's, you know, they have the ball. It's 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 kind of a wrap. So I make my way down into, you know, where the bars are at and everything. And, and then, uh, you know, there's, t- <laughs> there's the, right next to a bar, there's the TV. Uh-huh. And then like, I'm, I'm kind of watching it, slowing down a little bit. Uh-huh. And then I got the Rams fans kind of like, go home get out of here <laughs> go home I'm like all right whatever and then, oh no and, and then we get back down to um to is it uh i forgot what what level is that but you know the main section and mm-hmm. you got the big tvs there i stopped i stopped for a little bit because we actually get the ball back at that point right right and then you know we're all watching it right there and then there's these rams fans just kind of pass it by like go home homos Go home, go <laughs> home, and he's not like all oh, trying to. He's literally trying to get like into a fight with us. Wow. Yeah. So at that point, it's like, oh shit, we we what? We're actually gonna come back on this, and then so I I get back into the suite level over there, and we're watching the game now. We're into it, and it's yeah. And then the Ram fans are getting nervous, and boom! All, <laughs> all of a sudden. We get the lead and it goes crazy, man. Oh it man! Go, it, it it went so crazy, man, that. I feel like uh, there was people just jumping on top of each other, and um, we got to a little like mosh a little bit with the Niners right there, man. It was, it was, that was, <laughs> that was good times right there, dude. Oh yeah, that was a magical moment, man. That you know what it reminded me of? I haven't been excited like that since um, Steve Young caught Terrell Owens in the end zone. I forgot what game that was. I remember watching that as a kid, and they got the W, and Terrell had been having a bad game. Yeah. Uh, for the most part of that game, and he came through with the big touchdown for the W at the end. I remember being so excited as a kid. It kind of gave me those those flashbacks, those vibes again. But actually being there in that oh, moment yeah. and watching it, oh my god, it was it was special. So I, I think definitely that'll be a highlight that they're going to be showing for years to come down the line. Honestly, it was just that exciting of a moment um, 
that was my first official football game that I have been to as well. I've been to XL, XFL one at the Coliseum yeah. years ago on their first run, but that's about it. Nothing close to what I experienced at SoFi. That was amazing. Um, you know, and, well, and it was that's, even, that's, mm-hmm. that's the good thing about, uh, you know, the whole we finally get a stadium here, right? I could finally get to yep. see the Niners, and that was my first time seeing the Niners live, man. Yep, so, same here. So, I mean, and in the game, you know, when you know when Debo made that catch, uh, that was that was oh that was, man, that that was probably the best game I've been to, man, live. I think. Oh, for yeah, sure, yeah, by I think, far. I, I don't think it can be topped, honestly. Yeah, that was amazing. Only because one, we were visitors, right? And that, that was my first. Yes. Uh, as a visitor, right? Going in as a fan, as a visitor, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, to be honest, it was kind of not. <laughs> it was more more of a home game, to be honest. <laughs> it was honestly. I was very surprised at the amount of Niner fans that were in there, and you know, I'm I'm surprised that you experienced that. I didn't have one person tell me tell me anything or, or even around me as far as you know anything close to what you you know you were uh, experiencing. But I just remember after it was over and we got that W. The Niner fans everywhere in that building were going crazy and high fiving each other, hugging each other, just going crazy together. Strangers, they brought they were brought together real quick for this moment. Yeah, and we were all inside, walking out of that building, like just shouting and going crazy. Everyone high fiving, high five like a million people going out of that place, and not and in front of Rams fans everywhere, <laughs> and nobody nobody said a word. Nobody got smart. No one talked. Sh- you know. It was it was it was cool and it was a great experience and I, I don't think it could get any better honestly I don't think it could get oh, yeah. any better. I hope you checked in on one of your uh, cowboy friends, dude. So oh oh uh, they're out uh, uh, absolutely there was plenty of them I had to make calls. I know me too. So I mean that that was sweet right there, dude. And I just you know that's so, it, man. We'll, we'll see what happens, man. But I think tomorrow we're, we're gonna handle business, man. Go go Niners for sure. All the way, and oh, I like to—I uh, made money too off of my place bets. I believed in the boys, and I put the money on them the last couple of games, and have come up. So I just want to put that out there too, because a lot of people—they um, wanted, to, they kept hitting me up talking about, well, bet, bet. I had some people that, that flaked on me, man. That <laughs> I put bets in, and they disappeared. They went ghost on me as soon as the Niners won. You know. Final score. <laughs> what's, what's the final score tomorrow? Hmm. I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. A lot of these games have been up there. A lot of these games have been up there, in, 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 as far as points, so it's hard to say. Hard yeah. to say. Maybe like twenty-seven, seventeen, something like that. I don't know. Twenty-seven, seventeen. All right, we got thirty-three, thirty. Hmm. Oh, so you see, so, you're, so you have him more up there too. Yeah, you I think. More up there I too. think. I think Jimmy's gonna kind of silence the haters a little bit on this one. I'm hoping so. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I am not the biggest Jimmy G fan in the world. Um. I do respect what he does when he's playing, but like with last game when he gave up that yeah. that interception yeah, at the absolute wrong time, he that's, just has a ni- he has a that's niche what he does, that. dude. That's what he does. He makes oh it he, he makes it interesting. God. Oh, <laughs> he's purposely making <laughs> yeah. it interesting and entertaining. <laughs> no, but but no, I hear you. The, the thing about Jimmy, uh, he kind of he has his poise about him. So I think I think mm-hmm. he'll kind of he'll get he'll get us there. Just you know, we'll get that field goal and boom, we win it. Well, I'm hoping so. You know, he's the QB for the team, and you know, I I I want nothing but the best for the team. And if Jimmy G is the one that's, that's, that's driving the, you know, driving it to the to the Super Bowl, then we got to ride with Jimmy. We got to ride with Jimmy until Russell Wilson gets here next year. We're good. Oh my God! How about having uh Tom Tom Brady? We could have had Tom Brady too. Could have had Tom Brady at one point. He showed interest. I know, but how great would that have been? Oh my God! The he, he, Niner jersey with Tom Brady on the back. <laughs> Stop. Stop. All right, Louis, man. Hey, it was great talking to you, man. Always a pleasure, my brother. We'll see when we get that that, that music out. And where can the audience kind of check out your music? Yeah, um, it, you can check me out. Um, you know, I usually post stuff on my YouTube channel, um, Co- Collective State TV. I encourage everyone to go on there and check it out. Not just for my music, but I got stuff that I did there with Fly Society. You guys if anyone's interested in checking out any of the freelance work that I've done, I have uh, videos on there from various concerts and things like that, shows, festivals, like I share with you guys from artists from east to west, south, up north, anywhere. You know, I have plenty of stuff, um, people that I've seen, R&B, rap, hip hop, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then also, too, you can find my music on my SoundCloud. Um, you can just search me up. Um, 
Let me even, let me make sure I give these people the right one. Um, what's the what's the latest music you've dropped? The latest music that I've dropped, man, I, I've dropped a freestyle. I've dropped, um, let's see, a couple different original tracks. Um, I have, a, I, I try to give a nice little, um, you know, variety. Uh, some stuff for the ladies, some stuff for the fellas. You know, stuff you can listen to in the car, things like that. So well, we got Valentine's Day. We got Valentine's coming up, man. So we need some something for the ladies. Yeah, absolutely. SoundCloud.com slash Lou Rock. You guys can find my music on there. Um, that's usually where I post everything first. And again, on my YouTube, that's pretty much the primary channels that I'm using right now. Um, you know, and if you're and if you're fortunate enough to be involved as far as in my Instagram. Uh, one of my followers, I, I definitely, um, you know, I'm private on there, but I have stuff that I share with my uh, followers on there as well. Perfect. All right, Lou, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for stopping by and go Niners. Let's go. Let's go, brother. Have a good one. Thank All you. right, man. Would you like to be on the podcast? Got something to talk about? Make sure to head over to the website, hardwoodrod.com. Leave your name and the topic you'd like to discuss, and I'll add you to the calendar.